men are now being arrested for playing video games. I know that might sound like clickbait to you. It absolutely is not. Men are now faced, facing actual arrest just over playing video games. So guys who are playing online games, guys who are just playing games in general, they are now becoming the target of law enforcement. We're going to jump into the video, and I, this is just on – this is, you know, it's shocking, but I actually talked about it before that the day could come where, you know, they start going after men who play games and, you know, basically taking away your rights to play games, among other things. On her Instagram and, whoa boy, the FBI and the Department of Homeland Security have decided to start coordinating with different gaming companies so that they can root out extremist content and behaviors. Sorry, Call of Duty fans. The Government Accountability Office says that the FBI and DHS should use the same strategy that allow them to police extremism on social media to regulate the gaming industry. And the Anti-Defamation League, super reputable, says that 20% of adult gamers and 15% of kids playing games report being exposed to white supremacy while gaming. Oh, 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 Don't they have more important things to be doing? Ah, yes, no, we have people streaming in our southern border, attacking, assaulting, and killing women and children, saying you'll soon know who I am, but no. Now let's focus on the American gamers. That's where the real threat lies, guys. Somebody commented and said, what a waste of time and tax dollars. Yeah, that is the understatement of the century. Somebody else said, brother, when will we focus on important things? No, they're focusing on banning TikTok and rooting out extremist gamers. <laughs> Somebody else said, wait, the people who couldn't thwart January 6th are now going to be tracking video games? I mean, come on. These guys can't even stop mass shooters who post forever about what they want to do. And here, all of a sudden, they're going to find violent intent inside of video games? Okay, well, they couldn't thwart January 6th because... You know what? I don't even need to say it. You know why. But the last point stands. They literally can't do it. Anyway, Intercept was the first to write about this, and they went into more detail, saying the gaming companies are coordinating with the FBI and the Department of Homeland Security to root out so-called domestic violent terrorist content, according to a new government report. Noting that mechanisms have been established with social media companies to police extremism, the report recommends that the national security agencies establish new and similar processes with the vast gaming industry. And all of this came out thanks to a Government Accountability Office, or GOA, report. And apparently this was all really kicked off with Senator Dick Durbin writing writing a letter to Attorney General Garland saying, unlike more traditional social media companies, which in recent years had developed public-facing policies addressing extremism, created trust in public safety teams, and released transparency reports, doing God's work. Online gaming platforms generally have not utilized these tools. In the letter, he also requested a briefing from the Justice Department on what channels exist for the DOJ in the online video game industry to communicate and coordinate on the threat of online video games by extremists and other malicious actors. Oh, what a shame that it does not exist already. I'm so, so sad. Mm, so tasty. This reminds me of how the government has been coordinating with Meta, coordinating with Facebook to limit extremist content, like the content that we post here at The Daily Wire. Is that the kind of coordination you want to do? You want to silence more people under the guise of extremism? We know what you do. And apparently they're trying to watch for all the key examples of domestic terrorism and extremism, which are defined by the FBI and the DHS as racial and ethnically motivated violent extremism, anti-government and anti-authority violent extremism, animal rights or environmental violent extremism. I don't know if that means they're throwing soup at the Mona Lisa, whatever. Now, this article also quoted Hassan Piker. Hassan Piker! And it might be one of the only times that I've remotely agreed with him, but he said, all I can think of is the awful track record of the FBI when it comes to identifying extremism, said Hassan Piker. They're much better at finding vulnerable teenagers with mental disabilities to take advantage of. I mean, yes, and saying that their track record is awful is just putting it mildly. Another guy commented and he said, isn't this good? Am I missing something? Okay, you sweet, sweet spring chicken. Let me introduce you to the DHS and the FBI who claim that they are just trying to protect us but are watching our every move thanks to the Patriot Act and consistently infringing upon citizens' rights who label concerned moms at school board meetings as domestic terrorists. Did we forget that? Did that just escape all of our minds? Let's also not forget that back in December, a report was released about how the FBI was exercising gross overreach in their categorization of traditional Catholics as domestic terrorists as well. That is literally something that our own government said was happening. So no, to put it mildly, I don't trust these people to really protect us. They are politicized, they are corrupt, and they are distracted by moms at school board meetings and Catholics and extremist gamers instead of focusing on the real issues at hand. The, to be very clear, this is going to happen regardless. It was only a matter of time. You have to understand that any space where young men go and the young men are, allowed, are able to talk amongst themselves, and regardless of what they talk about, any form any ability to 
not have your thoughts controlled or to not be continuously bombarded or policed is, is unacceptable in the modern day society. It's all about control. And of course, you know, what they're going to be doing is it starts out saying that by them saying that they need to ensure that people are not doing these things, but then it starts moving towards pushing specific social narratives and games. For example, oh, you cannot play this game until you go through like certain kinds of sensitivity training. You need to learn about the importance of climate change and what's happening regarding that. And we need to make sure that you are not saying anything, you're not you're not saying anything that does not go against what is allowed? You know, this is exactly what's happening right now. We're entering a reality. Is, oh, do you want to play these games? You need to fill out this quick survey, and we need to know what's where you stand. And don't and you better and never discuss certain subjects. Don't talk about what's happening overseas. Don't talk about certain crises. Don't talk. About, don't talk about. You know, do not express any opinions that go against this, or we'll take your rights. We'll, you know, you'll be banned. You can face prosecution. Most, most of you guys will say, "Oh, well, I don't care." You know, it's it's funny, but you don't have the funds to fight this stuff. And there's some of you that think that jail is a joke because you've rotted and we've rotted in cells for like for for years. But let me. But jail isn't a fun in place. Maybe you had fun in prison. But, you know, the average person, I'm telling you, you don't want to go to jail. The, the, the future right now for most men is basically just walking away from society, walking away, finding a piece of land to live in, retreating inside your homes, and basically just that. You know, someone talked about emulation, and they said that as long as emulation doesn't get screwed up there, you know, they're fine. And emulation is being destroyed right now. You see what's happening with Nintendo. They went after the user emulator. And of course, other companies are likely to follow because they don't care about the laws. They don't care about consumer protections. Emulation is perfectly, perfectly legal in the United States. Backing up your games is perfectly legal. Backing up your media. But, you know, the big fight right now is to make sure that you will own nothing and be happy. You will not have the ability to, you will not be able to own your games. Right now, most people don't own music anymore. Everything is a subscription service. So we don't, you know, we can't even, we used to have things like, you know, Google, what do you call that? Uh, we used to have like, you know, on Google Play, uh, Google Music. We used to have Google Music or, you know, and, you know, our app, or there was on, there was iTunes that you could you'd purchase your music, you listen to your songs that way. And then sometimes there were subscription services. Now everything is a, is a subscription service. If you want to listen to music, it's a subscription service. No one purchases music anymore. And if you do try to purchase music, that's going to be $2.99 for a song, $3.99, $5.99. Like imagine, guys, back when, you know, back in the old days, you used to pay, let's say, one ninety. you used to pay $1.99 for a song. Now it would not be shocking in disinflation to be charged $5.99 for a single song, which is the reason why most people would just automatically, you know, pay the boogeyman pay the boogeyman. And the craziest thing is that when you purchase a song, you're not actually purchasing the song. You're purchasing a license to access the song. So you don't actually own the song and they'll make it very difficult for just for you. If you try to purchase it, they'll make it very difficult for you just to listen to it. Like, oh, well, you know, there it is over there. We're not going to, we're not going to make it easy for you. If you want to use those features, you know, stream it to your devices, then you're going to need to pay for one of these streaming services, you know, and that's where things are really, guys. The the ultimate goal is so that is that you know you don't have, you know you don't own your movies anymore. This is a big thing. Most people don't own, own movies anymore. They don't own DVDs anymore. You know, it, it's it's all streaming, and you have to go through a million different hoops. Like, oh, you want to watch this? Oh, well, you have to. It's it's on this service or it's on that service, that streaming service. You know, it's you will own nothing and be happy, and that's the reality that we're placed in. You know, I mean, look at what's happening right now, where we're transitioning away from gas-based stoves to just electric and what if something happens what if the power goes out people can no longer cook food oh don't worry about that that's just that's 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 uh that's 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 that's, that's dangerous thinking you know guys i remember going through a terrible terrible power outage more than 10 years ago this might have been closer to 15 or 20 years ago in new york and the power went out across the tri-state area and we didn't have power for days we had no power and we had no water because basically if the power goes out, so does the water evidently. So we had no power. We had no water. And that was the reality that we were living in. And it's like, people don't seem to understand that if there's no power, there's no, there's no electricity, you know, 
and you can't you can't you know you don't have a gasoline stove well then you know you can't cook food you can't even boil water if you do have water if you do you know it's 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 a living nightmare you you have access to absolutely nothing and that's when all of a sudden you know they tell everyone they they, they tell everyone stay inside and you know it's like most people only have around 48 hours worth of food 48 to 72 hours is the average and after two to three days and then that's the end of it and then people start to go absolutely ballistic guys don't forget also that i have another channel called angry where i discuss gaming anime geek stuff nerd stuff real world stuff and whatever else interests me go and check the channel out you can find a link to the description of the video go check it out subscribe and support my work and also if you're enjoying the content you know, uh, you can hit the thanks button below to tip me in equivalence to the value thing that I provide with my videos. What do you guys think regarding this? Men are now being arrested for playing video games. I want to hear your thoughts on this. Let's talk about it in the comments. Like the video if you like it. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you like the video, share the video. And just remember that all roads lead to MWA men walking away. And cheers.